How much are you worth to God? Now, I really cannot answer that question, but I can tell you this. The price paid for our redemption was the blood of the sinless Lamb of God, the only begotten Son of the Father. The Apostle Peter referred to Christians as God's elect. He affirmed that we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 1 and verse 2. Later in this very same chapter, Peter instructs Christians to pass the time of their sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. 1 Peter 1 and verse 18. Now we normally evaluate an item by the price we had to pay for it. Your automobile is more valuable than a pen or a pencil. Your house is more valuable than your automobile. Well, if that is legitimate reasoning, what is your soul worth? Well, you didn't have to pay anything for it. But it cost our Heavenly Father his precious Son. Does that truth provide you with any insight into what your soul is really worth to God? In Matthew 16 and verse 26, Jesus said, For what is a man profited, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Friends, Christians are redeemed people. But the price paid was not silver or gold, but it was the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The word redeemed means that we are released by payment of a ransom. Jesus tells us plainly what the ransom was. For the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life, what? A ransom for many. Matthew 20 and verse 28. There is not enough gold and silver in the world to redeem one soul from sin. But the blood of Jesus Christ accomplishes this goal. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Hebrews 9 and verse 22. Friends, if Christ had not shed his blood, the whole world would still be lost in sin. The blood of Christ redeems us from the vain conversation or manner of life which we received by tradition from our fathers. That clause would indicate that the recipients of Peter's letter were Gentiles. It's unlikely that Peter would have used that kind of language of the Jews. The law they received came not from the empty traditions of their fathers, but it came from the very mind of God Almighty. The Gentiles, however, had lived by the evil and empty teachings they had received from their philosophers. And a careful reading of Romans 1 and also Ephesians 4 will help to understand why Peter would write as he did about the Gentile peoples. As you can see, if you look at this chapter closely, there was a definite connection between the expression, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, and Peter's reminding these early Christians of the price which God had paid for their redemption. God has graciously provided us the way of salvation. Jesus paid for that way with his own blood. Therefore, every believer in Jesus Christ must pass the time of their sojourning here in fear. We must be constantly aware of what God has done for our salvation and live in such a way as to have the approval of God. Now that does not mean that anyone can deserve what God has done and is doing for us, but it does mean that we are to live with God's will always in our mind. We must have the attitude that Jesus expressed in this verse in John 8 and verse 29. For I do always those things which please him. When Peter mentioned our being redeemed by the precious blood of Christ, he referred to him as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Or in other words, the one whom God chose to purchase our salvation was one who had not sinned. He met all the requirements for a perfect sacrifice for our sins. And we need to thank God each and every day for sending his son to us and that Christ willingly laid down his life to save us from our sins. Friends, we pray that you will consider these things and have a blessed day.